I now call the East Lime Zoning Commission regular meeting of February 18th, 2021 to order. It is 7.37, is that right? 7.34 p.m., 7.37 according to my oven, but 7.34 according to my watch. This meeting is being held via video conference on Zoom. Uh, first order of business is just to do a quick roll call to see who's here, although I think I know. I uh, need to know which commissioners are present. Also identify interested parties that are present. Um, in terms of members, obviously I'm here as chairman. Uh, Terry is here, our sec here. Good, sec good secretary here. Yeah, we got to do the, the roll call, raise hands. Uh, we have Mr. Bill Dwyer is here. Yeah. Sir. Uh, Kim K is not present. Uh, Norm Peck. Here. Here. And Ann Thurlow. Here. Outstanding. Outstanding. Very good. And uh, guidelines of the Zoom meeting. We'll just go through. Actually, no, we don't want to do that just yet. Alternates, we have James Liska. Is, is Jim here tonight? No. No? Okay. Uh, we know Denise is here, right? Denise? I'm here. Very good. And George McPherson is not here yet? Uh, no. no? No? Okay. Very good. Uh, we have some participating applicants I want to identify at this point. We have Andrea Dallaire. Uh, applicant is she's and, here and there she is excellent we have ted harris attorney yep ted's yep. here yep we have uh patrit marku i don't have patrit um ted may be doing his presentation for him so okay very good and then from a staff standpoint mr bill Mulholland, our zoning official is here uh jen lindo who is handling uh, facilitating this meeting for us again. Much thanks. Uh, Brooke Stevens, our recording secretary. There she is. And is Roseanne Hardy here, our ex officio? Not yet. Not yet? Okay. No. All right. So we'll go ahead and seat uh, an alternate at this point in time. And since we have one empty seat or one vacant seat this evening and we have one alternate present, that's pretty simple math. Uh, Denise, you will be seated for tonight's meeting. Much appreciated. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Moving right along to the guidelines of the Zoom meeting, which I've got to go through as we customarily do with all of these Zoom meetings. I need to read these uh, entirely to the audience. Uh, first of all, please remember that while unmuted, we can hear you and everything going on around you. We can also see you. Uh, board members and staff will be unmuted during the entire meeting. As required by executive order, everyone must state their name and where they are from prior to speaking. For example, John Smith, board member. And if you're a resident, Harry White, 123 Main Street. Just let us know who you are and where you're from, your address each time you speak. During public delegations, Jen will open the lines for comment. Please wait to be called on to speak. Once you have finished speaking, please mute your microphone or phone. During each agenda item, only the board, staff, and presenters will be unmuted to speak on that particular item. Only one, only one person, excuse me, may speak at a time. If you wish to speak, please raise your hand and wait to be called upon. Board members will be called upon to provide comment via a roll call. Members and alternates for all motions, in the interest of making sure we have a clear record, please plan on roll call votes so the public and Brooke, especially taking minutes, can be very clear on the record. Only hosts are permitted to share screens at this time. Any documents to be shared must come through Jen at J Lindo, that's J L I N D O, at eltownhall.com. As required by executive order, all documents being discussed and reviewed at the meeting must be posted on the town website no later than 24 hours prior to the meeting. This entire meeting is automatically recorded by Zoom and upon the host logging out, the meeting will cease and so will the recording. The meeting cannot continue without the host. And with that, we'll move on to a little more of the substance of tonight's meeting. And we begin as we always do with public delegations. Public delegations are time set aside for members of the public to address this commission regarding items, topic, subjects, not appearing on this evening's agenda. Is there anyone from the public that wishes to address this commission regarding any issues concerns that do not appear on tonight's agenda. So I'll I have defer, a couple I'll, I'll defer, of the, I'll defer yeah, to you, a Jen. couple people that I think are here for some later public hearings. 
Um, okay. Tom, did you need to speak during delegations or are you here for? No, oh, I do not. Okay. Uh, Mr. Covington, do you need to speak during public delegations or are you here for a public hearing? <coughs> All set? Um, I think his computer froze. Okay. Um, oh, there he is. Not there sure is. what he said. Yeah, M Mr. Covington, you are muted, so I don't know. Oh, I think he froze again. Yep. Oh. Okay, well, um, I have a Michael Artis. Did you need to speak during public delegations or are you here for a public hearing? Uh, uh, no, I'm, I'm here uh, as the engineer, a lead designer for uh, okay. Mr. Marco for the, for the 159. Okay. Appreciate okay. it. Excellent. Thank you. Very good. I have one more that's not somebody that I recognize. Um, they're logged in as SRSTTS. Um, if you wish to speak during public delegations, you'll need to unmute yourself now. Uh, Robert Rizzo from ONG Industries, okay. along with Ken Biega is also on uh, the Zoom call. Yep. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I think you're good. Yep, I think that eliminates anyone from speaking at public delegations. Everyone is here for a particular item. Moving on to the public hearing segment. Uh, item number one is the application of Andrea Dallaire, owner, for a special permit under Section 25 and 25.5 for the keeping of livestock and poultry, more than six, at property located at 44 Cardinal Road on 16 plus or minus acres, East Lyme Assessors Map 52.0, Lot 20. Uh, I will note the application for a special permit is under Section 5.2.3. Must comply with Section 25.5, agriculture, uh, agriculture or farm, specifically items one and two for six or more chickens. Uh, I'm just going to note that the application, the legal, legal and plans for the record. Uh, is, do we have? Do we have uh, legal and plans for the record? So we have all that for the record, Bill. Is that right? Oh, did I lose Mr. Mahalan? He's muted. Yep. All right. Everything has been run, right? We've, we've followed all the protocols, essentially. That's correct, Mr. Chairman. Excellent. Uh, moving on to the presentation by the applicant, Andrea Dallaire. Uh, this would be the appropriate time for Andrea to, uh, to go ahead and present to us. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Thank you all for uh, taking the time to hear me out. Um, we are a family. I've got two small children. We're looking to... <laughs> Um, teach them about taking care of animals. We want to have up to a dozen egg laying chickens um, and up to four goats. Uh, and we give those numbers pretty much because you never know what happens with animals. Um, but I grew up in Maine and grew up around animals and I'd love to include that with our family, our kids and plus it the rewards of the eggs would be very nice for a family i mean um studies show with children and when they grow up it's about responsibility it's about respect and it's about the rewards that they get and um they're also fun um <laughs> goats and chickens can be a lot of fun but uh there's a lot of responsibility that goes into managing those animals um and we want to include that in our life, in our home. I have a good. question. Appreciate it. Mr. Mulholland, uh, the zoning um, official has a question for the applicant. Uh, you know, could you have the applicant briefly tell us about her property? I think there are, uh, is, if I'm not mistaken, 19 acres. There's a barn. It's 100 feet from any property line. Um, and I think it's in an RU40 zone. So there's plenty of room. Um, yeah, there you go. There's the plan that Jen's put up. And yes. I think if you take a look at that, um, we can all see very plainly that's a large piece of property off of Cardinal Road. 
Um, there's a home on it. There's a barn on it. It's more than 100 feet. Our regulations require that animals be kept 100 feet. We've interpreted that over the years as being the location of the barn, um, recognizing at times that if you had horses, they sometimes can be let out and run, and they often run to a property line. But the animals, the, the operative word is kept within the zoning regs. And that word uh, I have interpreted to be the barn and the location where they are really housed. Um, I have no issues with this application. Um, so thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I think I've probably covered just about everything um, unless the applicant has something uh, she would like to add. Uh, no, I appreciate your support. <laughs> um, as you said, we're uh, pretty tucked back and we've got a lot of space and we're trying to follow all of the rules and regulations set by the town. Excellent. Very good. With that, we'll move right ahead to questions by the commission. If there are any commission members that have any questions in regards to this application, this would be the appropriate time to voice those questions. Mr. Dwyer. Are there any roosters? Uh, no. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Anyone else? Uh, just one question, Mr. Chairman. Terrence Donovan <clears throat> here. Are they penned together or is like one on the vinyl fence and one on the other enclosed fence on that drawing we just saw? Uh, they are separate. Um, chickens would be in one fenced area in the vinyl fence and the goats would be in a, um, it's a wood fencing um, with mesh wiring. Um, when the goats come as babies, it's not safe for them to be walking in the chicken poo, so. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else? Comments? Questions? From the commission? If not, we'll move to uh, public comment. I mean, certainly the property is clearly more than adequate for this type of activity. That's uh, very clear. Um, I admire you for what you're doing. I think it's fantastic. I will just say as a personal note, uh, there are a few places I enjoy more on this planet than my in-law's house. My father-in-law has a 13-acre property and has had animals uh, for many, many years. And uh, the sights, the sounds, the smells, I didn't grow up in that type of a setting, but my wife did. And uh, there are a few places that I enjoy more than being uh, back back in the back of the property near the barn with, with all the activity and the animals and, and again, all the, all the various noises and, and smells that go with that. It's, uh, Absolutely. It, it's a great place. So with that, we'll go right to public comment. And uh, Jen, I'll let you uh, facilitate that. Uh, I think Terry viewpoint. has a couple of letters that he needs have to some letters to read. Oh, we record. do. Okay. Yep. This first letter from Mark what? Christensen. Yep. Grassy Hill says, Dear Chairman and members of the East Lime Zoning Commission, I submit this note for the public hearing in support of Andrea Dulaire's application for livestock on her 16 acre property on Cardinal Road. This is a good use of the land and she is aware of best management practices for livestock. I would also state that she will likely have spent a considerable amount of money for this application for just a few animals on this land. Sincerely, Mark Christensen. We have another letter here from a Thomas Hall from Riverview Road. Dear Chairman and members of the East Lime Zoning Commission, I submit this for the public hearing in support of Andrew Dulaire's application for livestock on her 16 acre property on Cardinal Road. It's my hope that you will see the considerable expense and effort Ms. Dulaire has willingly taken on to comply with our town regulations as evidence that if her application is approved, she will be a good neighbor and a responsible steward of the land. And I have one more from a Sally Uden. I think that's right. Forgive me, Sally, if that's wrong. Dear Chairman and members of East Lime Zoning Commission, I would like to submit this note for a public hearing in support of Andrea Dulaire's application for livestock on her 16-acre property on Cardinal Road. This is a good use of her land, and she is very well aware of best management practices for livestock. Sincerely, Sally. That is it. Mr. Thank, you. Thank you, Terry. Appreciate that. 
And with that, we'll, uh, I'll ask Jen at this point to, to move on to the first person and so on, if we have more than one to speak during uh, public comment, either, either in favor of or in opposition of this uh, application or neutral, right? Go ahead. Tom, I, I think you're here to speak on this application if you wanna go ahead and unmute yourself. I think I'm unmuted. Go ahead, you are. Okay, uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Tom Kalal on 80 Grassy Hill Road. And I um, support this application as well. I think that the, it's important that we teach our children where, where food comes from. And, and we all know that local food is, is significantly more nutrient dense than food that comes from California. I think, I think it's a great and admirable effort and I'm 100% supportive. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kalal. Okay. Uh, bum, 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 bum. Mr. Covington, I'm not sure which application you were here to speak on. He's uh, here with 159 Boston Post Road. He's having okay. trouble. He, he told me he's having a little trouble with okay. his um, connection. All right. Thank right? you. But he can see everything. Yep. Thank you. Um, I think that's I think it. That's it. All right. Very good. Uh, yep. Unless we have any further questions or comments by any commission members, I will take a motion to. Uh, either continue or close the public hearing. I would suggest that we close the public hearing. Uh, I don't see reason to continue it at this point. Make a motion uh, to the public hearing. I'm sorry, uh, Terry and Bill raise your hand at the same time, so. Okay. I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Thank you, Mr. Dwyer. Parents don't even will second that motion. Very second, we have a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye, raise your hand, Got to go around. Aye. Donovan, I, Mr. Peck, I, Ms. Thurlow, I, uh, Ms. Markovitz, there she is, I, I for me, and did I miss anybody? I think we got everybody. That's, that's everybody. Very good. All right, moving right along to item number two, public hearing item number two, which is the continuation of an application of Theodore A. Harris, Esquire, agent for 159 Boston Post Road, LLC, owner for a special permit for mixed use, CA, pursuant to section 8.2.2 and section 25 at property located at 159 Boston Post Road, East Lima Assessor's Map 31.1, lot 32. Uh, I'm just gonna note the following exhibits for the record. Um, Harry has the list. Terry has a list. Yeah, Terry's going to go ahead and read the uh, the list. Uh, we have exhibits A through P. Is that right, Terry? I think we're up to Q. Okay, we're up to Q. I think so. All right, and then following that, uh, we will have the presentation by the applicant or Ted Harris on behalf of the applicant, I should say. Terry, your Terry, microphone. Terry, you're on. His microphone uh, must be out again. Oh, oh here he is. He's there. No, can you hear me now? All right. Barely. You just need to just read the exhibit list from A through P or Q, whatever it is. Can you hear me, Mr. Chairman? So, gotcha. Uh, pardon my mic if it goes out again, but exhibit A is the application for special permit for mixed use in a CA at 159 no. Post Road, dated 1124 2020. Exhibit B is the application narrative. Dated 11 24 2020. Exhibit C, the Zoning Board of Appeals approval of variance date. Here we go. I think we lost Terry. Did we, did we lose him completely? Can you hear me again? Barely. Can you hear me now? Mommy, can you hear me? I need to pitch in and buy him a new computer. Jeremy, read the notes. I, say it again? Read the notes for me. I'm going to switch over to my iPad. Okay. All right. Uh, item C is the Zoning Board of Appeals approval of variance dated 10-5-2020. Uh, 
Item D is the legal ad for the day run January 9th and January 17th, 2021. Item E is the public hearing notice filed with the town clerk December 31st, 2020. Item F is the mixed use demolition plan, C-101. Item G is uh, mixed use building site layout, C-200. Item G is mixed use building grading plan, C-300. Item I is the mixed use building lighting and utility plan, C-400. Item J is the mixed use building landscaping plan, C-500. Item K is the mixed use building detail sheet, C-600. Uh, item L is the office renovation sheets, 1 through 27, dated January 27, 2021. Item M is the applicant's request to continue public hearing, dated February 3rd, 2021. Item N is the civil plan set revised to February 12th, 2021. Item O is the pollution prevention and stormwater quality management. Item P is the zoning block and item Q is the engineering department review comments of February 18th, 2021. That's the list of all the exhibits. I can't wait till we get back to meeting in person. I really can't. I agree, Mr. Chairman. That, 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 that can't happen soon enough. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, can you hear me? This is Terrence P. I can hear you loud and clear. All right. I am back. Sorry for that. No, not a, excellent. We're good. We are good. So at this point, we'll take the presentation by our good attorney, Mr. Ted Harris. I say our good attorney. Uh, we, we see uh, Attorney Harris rather frequently. I've seen him rather frequently over the 11 years I've been on this commission. And so uh, I say that with affection. Go ahead, Mr. Harris. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. I, I hope I'm unmuted here. You are. We can hear you. Okay, good. We hear you fine. All right. As, as you heard from the call of the meeting, this is a request for a special permit with respect to mixed-use development in the CA zone. With me tonight is Mike Artis and James Covington, our designers and engineers, and they'll be walking you through the site plan and, and other aspects of the site itself. I'd like to start off by going through some of the regulatory considerations um, required in terms of this application. First, as a preliminary note, and as part of the record, the sign was um, posted in accordance with the regulations and a stamp picture is part of it. Um, the regulatory, excuse me, the exhibits um, that were submitted. Our town engineer, Victor, has look and looked at these plans throughout the process. In fact, it's been an iterative, iterative process with Victor. He's been very helpful and has made some very nice suggestions. Um, and his latest email indicates that the final tweaks, if you will, uh, have been completed to his satisfaction. So let's look at the CA zone standards. And with respect to mixed use, there are really two main standards. One of is one of them is that the residential portion may not exceed 50% of the overall um, use of the building. In this case, it's a 50-50, which is most cases with respect to mixed use. Commercial is usually on the first floor because that's the most convenient place for the commercial and residential is on the second. And this is actually the same type of arrangement. Uh, the second floor will have four one-bedroom apartments and one two-bedroom apartment. Access will be in part through a stairway, an internal stairway, and in part through an external stairway. The total square footage of the building is 7,000 square feet, 3,500 square feet per floor. And actually, you know, with this size building, absent the fact that it's mixed use, this would have been approved through Mr. Mahone's office because he would approve a building up to 20,000 square feet in this zone. There's also a unique parking standard applicable to mixed use. It was developed first for the CB zone and ultimately about two years ago, also included in the CA zone mixed use. And I'd like to just, because I know some commission members weren't around when this, this concept was um, developed in conjunction with a major rewrite of the C 
of the mixed use uh, regulations in the CB zone some odd five, six years ago. But anyway, there was a study done by an academic organization which looked at parking with respect to mixed use activities. And their conclusion was that the normal regulations resulted in over parking. And the basic reason that that occurred is parking is based on peak use. Um, so the typical calculation for parking would be the peak use for residential, the peak use for commercial. But in a mixed use context, that doesn't coincide. In fact, almost never coincides. So what you end up doing is having peak um, parking usage, but you don't have the usage during any peak period. So we developed a calculation which would take the higher parking calculation of the two uses, that is the first factor, and then take half of the lower parking calculation, and that that sum becomes your, your parking calculation for the mixed use development. That um, parking calculation was used um, in the Gary Smith building on Main Street, the building across from Lillian's. And my office and my office parking lot adjoins his parking lot in the rear. So I've had an occasion to observe um, whether or not there's been overflow from his parking. In fact, there's a common entrance to the two parking lots. And over the years, I've never seen anyone uh, leave his area and try to park in our parking lot. So it seems to me that that's intuitive evidence, if you will, that that is a viable parking standard. Um, there is one in this one building in the CA zone that has been built with respect to this same parking standard. And I talked to the owner today and he echoed the same sentiment that, that the parking standard works. He's had no problem with respect to parking based on the standard that is in the regulation. So our parking calculation is based on the standard in the regulations, but I just wanted to mention, I, I believe that that standard, which was enacted by this commission some five or six years ago, is an actual valid standard for parking in mixed use context. Let me look at the lot history itself because that has some relevance to what we're talking about tonight as well. First, I trace this lot back to the 1930s. Uh, I did that for a lot of reasons, not the least of which was the need to apply for a variance. I wanted to make sure that this was a pre-existing lot and in fact it was. In general terms, the lot is long and narrow, roughly 71 feet wide by 200 feet long. Uh, this is in the context of uh, the CA zone, which requires an 80 foot, 80 foot frontage. So it's deficient in that area. And I'll talk about that a little more. The size of the lot is approximately a third of an acre. There are adjoining properties as you would expect. On the west and on the north side is the portion of a parking lot for the East Line High School, principally for athletic activities. There's a buffer along that parking lot. Uh, on the east side, so excuse me, yeah, on the east side is the parking lot for a pizza mm -hmm. restaurant. And obviously on, on the south side is Boston Post Road. There's an existing house on the property, which is in disrepair and it literally lies on the westerly boundary line of the parcel. And on the east, there's a garage, which is virtually on the easterly boundary line of the, problem, of the property. And I think that's reflective of the fact that the lot is narrow and, and you have to, <laughs> there's not a lot of room in terms of width on the lot. So if you look at the lot itself, it does meet all the bulk standards required under the CA zone, except for that frontage requirement. The actual frontage, because it's on a curve, is 73.3 feet but the actual width of the lot, because the, the width is smaller than the curve, around the curve, if you will, is 71.3 feet. And again, that's in a zone that requires 80 feet. So that has implications for the design of the site. The lot size is 11, excuse me, required for this use on this lot would be 11,800 square feet. And the lot is 14,975. So it meets that criteria as well. All the 
building yards, if you will, are met except for that westerly boundary, but we did obtain a eight foot variance for that. And so the westerly boundaries of the building set some four feet, four feet from the property line. And I'll be mentioning that a little later as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Finally, uh, the parking calculation I mentioned earlier comes up to 18 point some odd spaces. And obviously we rounded up to the 19 spaces that are provided, so we meet the parking standards. Finally, coverage in the zone is a maximum of 30% and our coverage, our actual coverage is 25%. So that gives you a sense that we're not really overbuilding on this site. We're well within the coverage allowed um, in terms of buildings itself, themselves. But the lot shape, <coughs> excuse me, has big implications with respect to the design of the site. When you have a long and narrow site that's perpendicular to the road, the only effective way of, of putting a building on a site is parallel to that long line. And as you can see from the plans, that's exactly what happened. Um, you, we've seen this in other areas of town. In fact, the, the building across from what used to be called the Midway Mall. Although the lot is a lot larger, the effective usable area because of the cliff behind it is very similar in dimensions to this lot, although parallel to the road, not perpendicular. And you can see that they made an effective and, and use of the site. And, and I think the building looks very nice, actually. And just so you know, the builder of that building would be the builder of this building. So I think you can expect a high class building based on what we, we've seen from this builder you know, on a prior occasion. The next thing I'd like to mention to the commission are buffers. Um, because of the tightness of the site, we're, gonna, we're, we're requesting some relief and alteration of buffer requirements. And, and specifically, 24.6E3 allows this commission either to eliminate, modify, or substitute, allow the substitution of fence in lieu of the six foot buffer requirement. So let's look at the west side. The west side, we have a four foot buffer and we've provided plantings on that side. There's a buffer along the East Line High School parking lot of six feet as well. We're, we're requesting a two foot relief of buffer on that side, uh, having provided the four feet. On the north and east side, we are proposing a vinyl fence in lieu of the buffer. It'll be a high class vinyl fence and Mr. Long Mahone has several samples of, of alternatives. Uh, and that would provide better isolation, frankly, for the site, uh, particularly with respect to the pizza restaurant because there's a lot of activity on that side in and out. And there's virtually no buffer on that parking lot on, on the pizza house side. So we, we think that the vinyl fence would provide a lot better protection for the site itself. Finally, I want to talk about the driveway. The driveway as it comes into the site is 24 feet, but we've narrowed it to 20 feet as it approaches the building. Um, and I had an extensive discussion initially with, with Victor on this, and he had no issues with the width of the driveway, particularly in that area. Um, it's the tightness of the site that it requires that this reduction, but it also makes sense because the, it's a very short distance. It's along the building itself. And frankly, it's, it's a width that many town roads are in, in East Lyme today. So we're, we're requesting a four feet of a relief in that particular area. The most important area is the intersection at the road and that will remain at 24 feet. So, and I know this commission has done this in prior occasions, realizing that the most important part of the, of the driveway is the, the area at the road itself. And once you get into the site, it's not quite as important. So we're requesting that as well. And you'll see that on the plans. Finally, the, some comments as to the building, although you'll be seeing this in more detail. Uh, it's a traditional design we're proposing a high grade of vinyl siding. Um, Mr. Mulholland is still tweaking some architectural features and we've told him that we're happy to, we've provided him with a variety of alternatives and we're happy to listen to any other suggestions he might ultimately have in terms of little tweaks to the building. Because our, our 
goal is to make as good a product and a good looking as a product as we can. Site lighting, we've provided examples of, example of light fixtures in this small home. They're high grade fixtures. We've also provided a lumen plan, which has been reviewed by the town, by the town attorney, by the town engineer. Uh, and it shows that there's light spilling off site in accordance with the regulations. And finally, utilities to the site will be public water and sewer. So, and this is well within the, the um, available sewer usage without going to the commission for a specific allocation. It's well below what would be required and it's an automatic request for a permit <coughs> department itself and not from the commission level. So with that, I'd like to turn this over to Mike Artis to give you a view of the site itself and the building. Good. Thank you, Attorney Harris. Mike Artis. I think he's muted. Am I unmuted now? You You're are. Good now. Excellent. Yes, sir. How are you doing? Uh, I'm Mike Artis, Water Connect. I'm an artist associate, and I'm the lead designer for this project. And uh, am I allowed to share screen? Yes, you are Absolutely. allowed. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, so I want to give. Uh, yeah. Okay, can you see that? Sure can, yes. Okay. All right, so, so here's the building um, uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a 3D perspective. Uh, I guess you would call this sort of like a modified cape. Uh, we're trying to, uh, architecturally, we're trying to, to, to keep some old world New England feel in, in the building. And, uh, and, and, and I think, I think we, we, we've done something here. I hope you agree. Um, uh, and, and what I want to try to do is show you this and, and show you the different components of the building so that you uh, understand uh, the, the layout and, and the feel. So going to the, uh, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you just a quick tour of the building before we go into the site. Now I'm not sure if, if James is able to uh, speak or not, because he was having problems before. Uh, I think so I am the basement now. Of the building. Oh, good. Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Here's, here's the basement of the building. Uh, uh, in the basement, we have some, some storage areas for the apartment. Each apartment gets a roughly uh, 100, a little over 100 square foot of storage in the basement. Um, on the first floor, we have two commercial spaces, uh, one smaller space on the back end for 1100 and the largest space here on the street side of, uh, of 1800 square feet. Uh, we have handicapped bathrooms in here and we have a central entry point that, that allows you to come into the commercial space one, commercial space two, or a corridor up to the second floor apartments. So Here's where you would land at once you got upstairs on the second floor apartments. You have three apartments coming off of this corridor. And then you have two apartments coming in from the outside on this end. Now, this is the street side of the building over here. This is the front. So the uh, Boston Post Road will be running this way. And then on the on the upstairs, basically you got firewalls and storage. Uh, as it was, as uh, as Ted said, the building is three to five hundred square feet per floor. This is the front of the building. Um, we uh, we used a mixture of uh, window layouts to create the facade work, and uh, I, I, I think I think we we got a, a fairly handsome building here. I think we do. Um, this is this is the back of the building. This is the plain back of the building as we had originally designed it. And uh, I want to I want to give uh, thanks to Bill Mahal. He he pushed us on this, and and, uh, and we came up with some other ideas uh, for the rear of the building because this, the rear of the building actually is what you see 
when you come um, into when you come into uh, the four corners from uh, from the south. So this, so I, I, I think we, we we got a nice alternative there. And then also on the street side, we we were able to give some different alternatives too. Now this 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 is the first alternative on the street side. This is on the Boston Post Road side, and this is the real side, right here. And this is another option that we gave for the street side, since this is the side that, that everybody, you know, uh, this is just what's going to be seen from the road as opposed to what's there now. Uh, so we gave some different types of options that uh, that he can do, and, and Bill is working with us on that. We appreciate all his input on that. Uh, and then, so we got about we got a number of alternatives for the street side. I think we'll be able to uh, make it look good. Uh, and, and then, uh, so so what happens is then you add the lighting. Now this is the lighting that we wanted to use uh, for area lighting on the outside. Uh, and these fixtures are, 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 are similar to the fixtures that uh, you have over at the, uh, it's a dollar store, I believe, right? Across Correct, the it's across the street. Yeah, okay. Right. And uh, so that was, that was uh, where the idea, they, 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 are, they are slightly different and more decorative than those lights, but uh, I think they add to the flavor that we're trying to bring uh, to this. Also, uh, someone said something about the siding. Uh, this is an example of the siding that uh, that we, we we're going to use. It's the cedar shape type type siding. Uh, so we're going to use some very nice upscale siding. Um, so going back to the site now. Going back to the site. Let me see if I can zoom in here a little bit so we can see something here. So, so okay. So this is our overall site right here, and as Ted was saying, the, the, the real technically the difficulty in this site was that it's a non-conforming site. So uh, the front of the site, because this 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 uh, parcel sits in the curve of this road, is only it's only seventy one feet across, and, and and the regs for uh, East Lime are written for eighty foot wide lot. Therefore, that was why we had some problems. And this this is the existing condition. Uh, one issue that we had gotten concurrence from uh, from East Line School is this: there's a pergola right here existing, and there's a fence right here existing. And we got concurrence that we they, they allow us to knock that down. So we have a, we have uh, correspondence to that effect that, that uh, we can take care of that. There's one more issue off the site where we right now. Uh, the power comes in overhead and it goes right now it goes here to this side of the building of course our building the front of our building is going to be facing on this side so we want to get that power away from there so we we want to go on the ground and, and bring it around this side and I'll show you that uh, coming up uh, this is uh, let's see now this plan here This is this, now we're getting into the the the, uh, the parking lot. So James, can you, yes. can you speak? Can you you can take it from here and 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 sort of uh, walk them through what we what we went through here. Okay, as it was stated earlier, uh, there are 19 spaces, and and um, um, a majority of those spaces are in the back and with a with a uh, about five or six parallel spaces along what's, what's called the front of the building. And the, the stormwater runoff is, is half of it runs to uh, close to the front and the other half flows to the, to the rear. And in the rear, we have a uh, storm, storm, stone inf infiltration trench to uh, capture and treat the, the runoff. And in the front, there is a dry well detention to uh, treat the, the runoff. And we're treating the difference in the runoff uh, from, from the impervious uh, initially uh, before, uh, before uh, previous 
the previous impervious, the difference in the previous impervious and and the new impervious theory. Okay. So in other words, what you're saying is we're going from from here, and all this here is is impervious surface right here. Yes. To pretty much covering the site overall with impervious. Uh, except for we have some green space here in front of the street side. We have up front we have some green space and then we have a we have some, some landscaping up in here to make things uh, to soften things up. And then back along here we have a, a, a green space screen. Um, stone and felt in field we have a green space uh, uh, screen that with a stone infiltration pitch in front of. And this side and this side are, are the, the, the fencing that we were that we were doing. And I, I have a uh, I have a defensing. If I can pull that up, that's the fencing that we would like to use on the, on the east and the west side. And then we were hoping maybe to use this type of fencing on the on the east side. And, and if you look back at the building, you'll see the kind of effect that that gives us. But now, are there any any questions on the site plan that anyone has? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Dwyer, Mr. Dwyer, go ahead. You have to walk up the driveway to get into the front of the building. There's no separate walk there. If I'm out on a street, how do I get into the building? Walking up the driveway? Uh, yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That, that, uh, that's something that we uh, work with engineering on. There is a, there is a, uh, there is a, um, a striped area right here beside the building. And um, see, our requirement was to create a 24 foot drive, drive here. And that's what we have here. And, and like I said, because of the fact it was not conform, we're not able to, we're not able to give a lot of, of uh, a hard space to uh, like, you know, sidewalk, because you don't have, the, you don't have that much in these buildings, right? Because of the widths of the lots. But uh, like I said, we do have some scriping here that a person can walk along. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, yes, I had a conversation with Attorney Harris this morning, and, and I brought that very subject up. And so we wanted to go back and look at that because that's something we've required. I uh, required the Dollar General, et cetera. It's a difficult site to do that because of the narrowness of the lot. But right. I think we can squeeze in a sidewalk to the front of the building and find a way to get around the side. Okay. Uh, it's, interesting, it's interesting that Mr. Dwyer picked up on that as uh, I had that discussion this morning. So we're gonna try to put a sidewalk in from the street to the front of the building, and then we're gonna come easterly where we can kind of intersect the pavement and we envision we're gonna have a striped area in there of a couple of feet, which would be uh, uh, to identify a pedestrian walkway. Because of the now it's a lot, I can't get a four foot sidewalk in there, um, but I can get a striped area and we think that will work because we don't anticipate um, this site being similar to uses we see in Niantic Village where there's a lot of pedestrian traffic in this area of the community at this time, there right. is not. Doesn't mean it won't be in the future. So we're looking to accommodate as much as possible and try to finesse a sidewalk in. So that did come up this morning in discussion and we are gonna revisit that. And that's a very good observation by Mr. Dwyer. Definitely, appreciate that. Good now, Mr. Dwyer. Does a fire truck have to get to the rear of that building? Yes. I don't know. I'm asking a question. Right. My understanding yes. is, my understanding is, um, Mr. Harris, uh, that this building is sprinklered. Is that correct, or am I uh, incorrect? We haven't discussed any sprinklers yet. It doesn't. By code, it doesn't require sprinklers. Okay. So we would. We've got the fire department. So literally almost next door, 
and you would have direct access up the driveway and you've got access on three sides, which is typically what I have been asked of by fire marshals for 20 years. Yeah. You've got, an expansive, good... you've got, a, you've got an expansive parking lot on the back there with, with Enter Slander School that I think would be pretty, pretty adjacent to the building, pretty close to the building, I would presume. Yeah. Oh, oh here, here's the parking lot line right here. Right. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the rest of it's just buffer, so obviously they can get access over the buffer. Right. Right. I know. How, Paul, excuse me, Mr. Chairman, Terry here. Go ahead, Terry. Now, on the other side, we have a fence, and, you know, Mr. Artis, I believe, tried to show us pictures of that, which I did not see. So, how high is that fence? Because unfortunately, it's kind of hard for firemen to get over a fence, being one myself. So just out of curiosity. On right. that, and then also speaking on the sidewalks, um, if you look at the front of the building, excuse me, on the side of the building on the street side, there is room, however, to get a sidewalk where they have the snow pile up there in front of those other two parking spaces that could run along the so-called side of the building and then have the painted lines on the front of the building. So if someone is attempting to visit these offices or whatever they may be, which I'll get to later, there is room for pedestrians to walk up from the sidewalk that is already there along the Boston Post Road. Mm -hmm. So where they, sh where they are showing the snow stockpile right there, they could add a sidewalk along the front of the building there too, which they're still working on the design to. And that way there'd be less of a hazard with painted area coming in from the street if someone does want to visit or if the tenants of the property have walking visitors. There's less um, pavement, painted pavement for them to walk on. Right. There's one but, more question. And couldn't you also get one alongside the back side of the property if someone is visiting the back three apartments? Well, that, there's no there's no entry right. back here. The entry is on this side. This right. is where the entry is right here. There's an entry here for three of the apartments and the two commercial. The back. And, there's a, and there's an entry here, right here. For yeah. uh there's two apartments here and then there's there's a commercial entrance right here on the first floor. Yeah, so the back of the building is just siding and windows virtually, really, you know, over, overlooking that parking lot over at Flanders or the administration parking lot. Yeah, I don't even think there's many windows back there. There's not a lot of windows back there. I think there may be one or per floor okay. or something like that. But uh, in, apartment, in apartments, I don't even think there's a window back there. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, you, you showed several different scenarios that you were talking about with Mr. Mulholland. Am I correct on that, or? Oh, you're talking about this? Generally speaking, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Um, yeah, go ahead, Mr. Mulholland. Yeah, they're looking at a few different Mr. options, Mulholland right, staff, in terms of windows, most and, of the, you know, dressing, most of the, those things. Go ahead. Yeah, most of the architectural elevations are really the east and west side and the south side. The rear of the building, primarily because there's a stairwell back there on the exterior, is going to essentially stay the same, um, being the rear of the building. To Terry's point about a sidewalk, as we were discussing earlier, um, that came up this morning because I'm a big fan of that type of, a, of a installation. And I do think we have enough um, area to get something in along the building. It won't be a four foot sidewalk, but, but we'll be able to mark that off so that it's clear it's a, it's a pedestrian access. And, uh, you know, we don't know what's going to happen in the future in, in that area. We could have uh, more residents, uh, one never knows what the future holds. And so it becomes more walkable. And as you know, we're always trying to facilitate the walkability of the community wherever we have the opportunity right. uh, as we require sidewalks along street frontages. In this case, uh, there already is an existing sidewalk. Yeah, we have no problem in working with Bill to get, get that to come up with a design for a sidewalk. Very good. For but, access. So you, you, you would have Terrence Donovan here. So you'd have no issue of adding one from the street? So long as it's feasible engine from an engineering perspective. Mike, what do you think? It's going to be tight. Uh, if we try to put any, uh, uh, any, any type of sidewalk there, we're going to cut down the 24 feet uh, lane. Uh, it's going to be tight. I mean, we no, don't, we don't Mike, have he's talking about... Excuse me. 
my point being is if you notice that the two parking spaces and what I'm calling the front, which is the Boston Post Road side, mm -hmm. to where you have a marker stated as a snow uh, stockpile area. You're saying right here. Yes, correct. 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 So theoretically, you know, like we could add a sidewalk from the existing sidewalk in. Oh, you're from saying the, from, they, from here? Correct. Here, yeah. Coming correct. in here. Yes. That's what, and then coming yep. around this way. And then go yeah. to the painted area, correct. Okay. Yep. Okay. See, now right, see, right again. There, see that dimension right there? Yes, but no, what I'm saying, you could, you could have that as the painted area. I'm just talking yeah. about yeah. if, we if got, somebody yeah. wants to visit painting. these. I'm sorry? You, 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 you're, you're saying, do you think we can go with a painted area here as opposed to coming up uh, <laughs> out of the you know, like having a curb and all that type of thing? Because no, Mike, what he's talking about is, is access from, the, from Boston Post Road along that front area. Along here? No, 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 back down. On the Boston Post Road side, Mike. Okay. Which, we're, which I believe we're all calling the front. Here you go. Right here. Here you go. Right. Yeah, that, yeah, Correct. Probably right. somewhere in there we'll go due, due north, straight up okay. in front of those two spaces. We're going to go... East, right there in front of the building to, okay. to, to the driveway. Uh -huh. We'll go straight up and you would take a right. Uh -huh. There you go. And we'll come out right there and that can facilitate uh, pedestrian traffic off the sidewalk and along the building we had we have talked about and is on the site plan. There's actually some striping in there already. Okay. Okay. Correct. Okay. And, and we can fit that. We can do that. And okay. we did discuss that this morning. Okay. Uh, Mike, we haven't discussed it with you yet, but okay. we're there now. So what we 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 happy we happy to accommodate whatever you need. Just, just that. Thank you. So, Very good. So it's fe you. if it's feasible, that's all. My, that's my only concern. And you're saying it is, so let's let's do it. Very good. I have a quick question. Uh, we have Ann. Is that Ann Thurlow? Yes. Go are, ahead, those, Ann. are those parking spaces along the driveway? Did you say? Right here. Mm hmm. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, they. I'm just. Parking. How do you get a parking space and two lanes of traffic and the sidewalk in like twenty and a half feet? You can't do it. Uh, yeah. no, it's very careful. It's not twenty and a half feet. Okay, I'm just trying to read what it says there. Yeah, that that's to the edge of the begin of the parking. Okay, got it. Thank you. So each parking space there is 10 feet by 22 feet. And okay. then the, the two-way traffic there, I mean, it's not a busy highway per se, quote unquote. It's more like a parking lot. So the traffic pattern right there in that area is probably very low, most likely is very low. So getting a car in and out of there, I know I know how to parallel park. It's very easy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, people don't know how to do it, but it is doable, very much so. They did extend the, the length of the required area, so. Excuse me, what do you do when you bring in the supplies? A truck supplying them, and it's parked right in the front. I'm, I'm all this room you got. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I didn't understand. You're going to supply that office with uh, some supplies. There's going to be a, a supply truck coming. It's going to be blocked, right? There's, in the front. there's a large dumpster area to the rear, which will provide some access for, for temporary loading and unloading. And for a truck to turn around, I would presume, that, right? Yeah, yeah that, okay. that is Wide a large, turn. what you see there is the path, the turning rays of a large box truck. Yeah. And, uh, it shows you how it can get in there and turn. Got around. it. Got it. Got it. So ba basically, Terry here. So what you're looking at right there is basically like the dumpster truck, which is Mr. Dwyer, the size of a yeah. possible delivery truck. It also depends upon the businesses that they are going to attract, which I was going to ask Mr. Harris, what his client intends to do in terms of that office is it going to be realtors is it going to be a bank is it going to be a convenience store or what type of store or occupant are we looking at mr i don't think we know at this point i think okay do you have does your client have preferences i mean because what, what i have heard, what i have heard that there's uh, going to be like a uh, i don't know if it's an orth orthopedic or something that type of uh, 
some kind of I, I don't want I want to say medical. I don't know the exact thing. Uh, but it's something in that room. Well, Very. medical medical facility does make a difference because theoretically you need a parking spot per bed. No, no, no. It's not right? a medical. It's not a medical right. facility. No, it's reading not. that it's, different, Mr. Mulholland. Yeah. Or it's not. It's when not. he says medical, I think he's talking doctor's office and yeah, doctor's okay. office, a doctor's office, a personal use, a retail <laughs> and an office use are factored out the same number in terms of our parking requirements. It's one space per 250 square feet of gross floor area of, of the habitable area. Now, obviously, that's our standard, but in the mixed use, you have a different formula, which uh, Attorney Harris explained earlier. Um, so that's a little bit different calculation. But in terms of uh, medical, it would be more uh, envisioned. And, and we did have some early on discussions because I asked the same thing on our early meetings. And uh, I think their preference is some type of medical use, whether uh, whether it's a dentist or uh, or some other type specialist. Um, and obviously, according to their testimony, yet to be determined, but it's designed based based on on those types of uses. And, and it would have to meet the, the parking standard for the use. Right. Because the, the calculations were based on that 250. Understood. I understand that. So have you thought about like if it is a medical facility and you have an ambulance come in, what's going to happen there? You know, well, if it's going to be a doctor's office, it's not likely you're going to have ambulances, ambulances coming in and out, except on a very rare occasion. When I hope not patient, if I'm the patient. I would say when a patient has a real issue all of a sudden. It has happened, just for the record, but yeah. No, I, I, I don't doubt, but I'm saying it's not a regular event. Mr. Okay. More questions, uh, Mr. Peck? Yes, uh, Norm Peck, board member. Um, I might be missing something here, but uh, if the required frontage is 80 feet, and we've got 73 feet, what what's going on here well this is norm this is a pre-existing non-conforming lot it dates back to as i said initially to the 1930s my my training has told me that their the expansion of a non-conforming use is not uh, you, you're making it you you con conflicting concepts the lot is non-conforming, so we can we are allowed to use the lot in its existing condition. We do meet all the standard regulations, except the, with respect to the buffers, which I've asked for relief on, in terms of the design of the site. I just pointed out that that, that variance was necessary because of the substandard width of the lot, and we did receive the variance so that uh, that allows us to put the building where where it's shown on the plan. Oh, okay, because the the zoning block says that the variance was for the four foot setback, but not the frontage. So you got a variance need, frontage as well. We need a variance, Norm. We don't need a variance for the frontage because it's correct. existing. That's We're not correct. diminishing the frontage. If I may, Mr. Chairman, in, in some sets of regulations in some towns, Norm, you'd be correct. In East Lyme, under your non-conforming rules, you, it, we are allowed, regardless of frontage or lot size, to develop the lot subject to all the other applicable regulations in your code. So lot width, lot depth are irrelevant. Um, even lot size, your zoning regs say that nothing in the zoning code shall prevent the uh, development, well, it does, it's not quite development, I'm going from memory, but the, the, essentially the development of a non-conforming lot subject to setbacks, lot coverage, building height, the, the, essentially the building envelope. But it's in section 21, which is the non-conforming section. And we have done this on numerous properties for years. I would just say kind of broadly, all the, all the scrutiny is good. It's healthy. It's what we do as a commission. I think all the questions have been very good ones. I guess, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a bit of a tight fit on the lot. I think that's on people's minds. Uh, at the same time, I think about that lot. It's been kind of a dead lot for so long. I, I, I've got a lot of history coming down Boston Post Road from the Patagansett Lake area where I grew up. 
And I go way back to when that was the rectory for the parish priest at St. Matthias Church. And since then, it sort of has never really made it in anything, as anything. It's, it's, uh, and in, 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 in many instances, and for a period of years, I think it was a bit of an eyesore, and to some extent may still be. So um, I, I think it's a fantastic looking building if we can work out all the, all the details, and that's what we're here for tonight. That's what the staff is here for, obviously, Mr. Mulholland and Victor. Um, but a great looking building, a huge improvement over what is currently there, in my opinion. Uh, it's a very high visibility area on that curve, and so I think that uh, uh, it's complemented or would be complemented by what's already across the street, the dental office or the, the orthodontist office. Uh, it, it, uh, it certainly piques my interest, this project, and, and uh, you know, there may still be some details that need to be worked out here, but I just wanted to just kind of paint it with a broad brush as to what I see. I'm really excited about the design of that building. Um, the building across the Midway Mall is, is uh, to me, is, is, a, is a gorgeous building. And if this looks anything, if this rendition is anything close to that, I think that uh, it would be a vast improvement over what we currently have there situated in that lot. Uh, again, those are just my broad uh, comments. And probably the parking, the one... Uh, piece of information or the one thing that, that again, that piques my interest is the parking. And, and Attorney Harris, you indicated that the parking calculation is the same as, as was done for the Gary Smith building. And I'm wondering from a staff level, because sometimes after these projects are completed and, you know, life goes on and, and we as a commission entertain other applications, we don't know what happens after the fact. And so I would ask Mr. Mulholland, have there been any complaints that you're aware of in terms of the parking uh, with the parking the spaces at the, at the Smith building, any issues down there with that building It being that it's a mixed use building? Well, Holland staff, um, I've actually um, driven in the back on numerous occasions, sometimes in the evening, sometimes during the day, midweek, I've been in there on a Saturday afternoon out of curiosity as well, because as you know, when that, that theory on mixed use in terms of the parking formula was developed and the zoning board adopted it. We right. all had, I think, some reservations as to how it would work. I have not had any complaints. I have not seen any issues. Um, it seems to function okay. Um, and, of course, subsequently the zoning commission adopted uh, the same reg in the CA zone, which is being used in this application this evening. Um, being a mixed-use business, um, I'm going to yeah, you know, most businesses close at five o'clock unless it's retail, and of course, then you have a changeover at five five thirty with people coming home from work. Um, you know, use does play a piece here, and I think you know certainly the applicant's going to look for the highest and best use that he has. Um, I haven't had any problems and issues in in Niantic at the Smith Building. Um, I think this will work. Uh, Victor and I have spent a great deal of time looking at this. Um, it does meet our code technically. Um, and with that said, I'll kick it back to you, Mr. Chairman. Appreciate it. Um, Any more questions? Other, Mr. Other Chair questions, comments by the commission? Ms. Uh, Terry, go ahead. You have something else. Uh, first of all, can we get rid of the screen share there? I believe we're all done with that. Okay. Um, second, but isn't the Smith building and this building there in two separate districts and Main Street is parking overlay? In my, yeah, I was, I was just, I was just, yeah, asking, they, and, I was just asking for Mr. Mulholland's expertise from a staff level, from an enforcement level, since the parking calculation for this building, true, it is a different zone, but the parking parking calculation is precisely the same. It's a mixed use building. The number of spaces in relation to the activity in the building is is similar if not very similar to the Smith building. And so I just wanted that analysis from the staff perspective, if there have been problems with parking, because I know the parking is probably on all of our minds because this is a tight lot. And I think if it meets, uh, if it satisfies us from a parking perspective, um, you know, that's a big uh, question mark, I think that, that we can check off uh, in terms of uh, taking, taking a look at this project. So that's, but you're right. They're well, two different zones. They're two different zones, but, Similar projects, both mixed use. Mr. Chairman, if, if I might add one item. Yeah. Um, the, you did approve a, a mixed use building in the CA zone about a year, two years ago now. 
And that was the one I referenced. And I, as I said, I talked with the owner today and he said, has had no issue in terms of parking either. Mm -hmm. Which, Which one, one is that, Mr. Harris? I'm sorry. Which one? Uh, 283 Boston Post Road. 283, it's either 283, I believe. That's up by Pat against is, the lake, right? In the lake. Yeah, is that the dentist office or something up there? No, no, no it's further, um, further it's, up. It's further up. It's almost it's to the bowl line. It's the lot before the where the condos were just finished on the lake. Right, right. right on the lake. All right. And that's <laughs> the next building, as I said. I, I I was curious as well, and that's why I called and asked him if he had any parking issues. Well, I mean, it's just that you keep referencing the Smith building, which is on Main Street, which well, is in a parking overlay zone. Excuse me. So therefore, you know, you won't have an issue because they can park on the street. However, now, depending upon the businesses that are tracking to your client's new structure, there is no parking on the street there. So that would be my only concern there. I mean, obviously, you know, you, you do meet the parking requirements then, but then again, so does Smith's building, but he has a parking overlay on, on Main Street, which allows for street parking. You do not have that on the post road. That's that is, my that's, point. That's absolutely true what I'm saying right there. And so well, then that, if people, that's why then I, I, if people choose I, to park on, you know, the town's property in the rear, what's going to happen back there? Or are they going to park in other people's property per se, which is possible, not going to say it's going to happen, but the possibility is there. You're right. That's my point. Can I ask one quick question? Go ahead, Ian. Um, will the apartments have reserved parking, like yeah. assigned parking? And if, so would that change how, you know, what's available for the businesses? I doubt that because of the way the parking is calculated, I doubt that they would have assigned parking because it's, it's like flex parking or hot racking, if you will, because of the, the residential parking spaces will also be used for the commercial purposes. I, I believe Mr. Peck had a question. Yes. Mr. Peck. Um, I, I can't help but feel a little uncomfortable with the walkway to the main entrance where you've got parking and then two and then two way traffic and then the side the two foot or whatever sidewalk. Um, it just seems uh, not quite right. I, and I wanted to mention this before we close the public hearing to get some comment, to get a response. But I envision, you know, somebody in a wheelchair or something entering the building. Um, it doesn't look uh, great to me. I agree. Terrence Donovan, board member. I agree. Dwyer. Attorney Harris, you want to respond to that or? Well, we do provide adequate walkway along the building. And remember, as, as Terry even said, there, the, there's limited traffic in this area because it's all, it, it's basically just to access the parking um, for the building itself. Um, we've provided, you know, an isolated area for the walkway. Um, and I, I think it will function adequately. And so do our engineers. Uh, Mike, do you have any comment on that? My, my, my thing is, if, I think if we get the striping out to create a visual for people, uh, I think that will address uh, the safety issue. We are cognizant of it. But like I say, it is a difficult situation. That the numbers are the numbers. And, uh, but, but I do think we can, we can, uh, we can make some improvements uh, with the scribe and because and, and, like I said, there, there's not going to be a lot of traffic here. People are not going to be going fast. And another thing uh, we can do is, is put some signage up to slow uh, the traffic down a little bit, or, or maybe even a, 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 a bump just to keep the traffic slow down, I think would be helpful too. A speed bump? Is that what he said? It, yes. yes. A speed, speed bump. bump. A speed bump. Actually, yeah. that's a good idea, Mike. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mulholland oh. wanted to chime in. I think if we, we look at this, and I think we all have the same concerns, 
But, uh, you know, in, in terms of looking at, at a parking lot like Stop and Shop, where you have a lot of high speed in the parking lot, we have one sidewalk within the parking lot, but most people park and walk through the parking lot, which has a lot of high speed. We do so at our own risk, and we're always, I think all our heads are on the swivel when we do so. In this particular case, so you're not going to have a lot of high speed parking. This is to drive in. Uh, you're going to be paying attention. It's your your uh, reason for being there is going to be purposeful. So I would anticipate everybody's going to be paying attention. It's not like they're going to be doing 25. And, and I do agree with the speed bump. That's a very good idea. Um, so we can we could do those things. Um, we can get the sidewalk in from the street into the building and over to, to the parking area. I'm not concerned about that. I know that can be done. Um, and we can try to look at uh, you know, whether we can squeeze a little more out uh, laterally to get a little more marked space along the building. And, and I think Norm and, and Terry both have a very good point. Um, these are all things we've talked about over the last year or so as we've worked on this project. Uh, Ms. Mullen, just a correction on the stop and shop. There is a sidewalk in the parking lot there, across well, the main entrance. Correct. Yes, I, I did say that. There is one, but you yeah. know, you don't always get to park up against that one. And when you're in other parts of the lot, um, you got to be paying attention, particularly if you're coming out with a cart. Um, not everybody drives um, appropriately, and we all know that. But thank you. Especially today. <laughs> uh, I a question, another question. I assume that you could not swing this plan to the west, move the building over to the Western boundary a little bit more? Look at all of those issues. Um, I think, Mr. Harris, your, your, your variance was four feet. Right, so we, we're, we're limited. We have to position the building where it is. You're maxed out on the west side, you're saying. Yeah, we're right. At, we, we received the variance that allows us to get to that point on the west side, correct? Uh, Mr. Harris, as, as I recall, those parking spaces, are, the parallel spaces are 10 by 20. Yes. Our, our code is 9 by 18, so I might be able to pick up a foot and contribute you that could. to the front of the building. So those are kind of things that we can continue to massage if necessary. Okay. Want to move to some comments by the public, uh, Mr. Dwyer? Have, do you have something else? Go ahead. Yeah. Those apartments only have one door in. If you have a fire in front of that door, you can't get out of that building. I think there's an inside in and outside entrance, if I'm not mistaken, is what the applicant indicated earlier. Okay. Mr. Chairman, Terrence Donovan, not on the back two. All right. Okay. Is that a problem? The code allows you to do that as long as you have egress windows, uh, you know, in in the top in the bedroom specifically. Uh, the code will allow you to do that. So those you're are, saying if we have a fire, those are for building the, codes. Well, well, well the, the 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 units are separated. Uh, they have firewalls in them, so everything is separated. Everything is uh, separated off uh, for firewalls. And uh, it's not of a square foot where you would need to introduce sprinklers. So uh, unless unless the fire unless the fire marshal requires us to do so, and and he, he might he might do that. We we, we just have to see. Um, but you know, right now we just uh, we, we, those things will be dealt with uh, in the sense because it's got to go through the fire marshal. And if he wants those are building code and fire code issues. Yeah, right. we, have, we have to do that. Is there a chance, Bill, that, that uh, sprinklers could be required? Is that a possibility? Well, it comes down to building code, and I'm not uh, that familiar with the building code, but that obviously is the jurisdiction of the building inspector and the fire marshal who will look at that at the time of building permit application and make those types of adjustments. A little bit outside our purview, but in addition, right. we're worried about public safety as well. Absolutely. Uh, also good, good questions. Good questions, real good questions. Let's go to public comment. I, are there some folks waiting? Jen, uh, is there a person or persons who wish to speak in regards to this application, either in favor or in opposition of or neutral? The only people that are in attendance are for the new business item, 
other than Roseanne, unless she okay. has something to comment, I don't have any uh, other members of the public. Okay. Roseanne? Let's give her a minute. She's on the phone. Sometimes it takes a little longer to turn off right. the mute. Button. A little, little delayed, delayed reaction, right. Yeah. Orange juice. <laughs> <laughs> With what in it? Yeah, right. right. <laughs> Go ahead, Roseanne. You're you're unmuted. Uh oh. <clears throat> Roseanne, are you there? Try again. No. Do you, do you get the impression she wants to say something? Yeah. Everybody seems to be having audio trouble tonight. I don't know why yeah. that is. But, um, I know what that's like. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> But while we're waiting, may I, um, well, it'd be going out of order, I would say. Roseanne, can you hear us? We cannot hear you. We'll come back to the commission, Terry, before we take a motion, if you still have something. Definitely. Well, it has to do with the motion, sir. Mr. Oh, Trump. it has to do with the motion. Okay. Yeah. Can you hear me now? We can hear you now. Yes. Okay. So a uh, very good discussion. I think a lot of good points brought up and um, I don't have anything else to add. Oh, Thank that's you, that. Okay. <laughs> that means we're doing a good job, everybody. All right. <laughs> Excellent. Very good. Uh, so so this, any final comments by commission members before we take a motion? I just, uh, I have one quick question about the square footage of the apartments. Denise, go right ahead. Um, how, the, um, how many square feet are those apartments? The one bedroom and the two bedroom. Mike, you want to answer that? Yeah, the, the one, the one bedroom is a little under 700 square feet. They, they kind of vary somewhere between 650 and 700 square feet and the 200, the two bedroom is right, I think it's close to 900 square feet, right in there. Uh, Actually, Terry Donovan, board member, according to my calculations, apartment 100 is 571 square feet. 101 yeah. is 531.8 square feet. The two bedroom, 102 is 692.9 square feet. 103 is 548 square feet. And 104 is 565 square feet. And a couple of these do not meet the minimum requirements, but I don't think it's that big of a deal in terms of meeting the square footage according to our regulations. So those numbers that Mike just read were a little high in terms of the square footage. Okay. Let me see. So right here I got 700. Now, you know what? I think, I think these numbers include the, uh, the storage space is what it is. That may be, Mike. That's what it is. That may be. That's exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. But as you, if you look at these units, though, they are very nice, nice size units uh, for one bedrooms. They all, they all very nice size units. And this two bedroom is uh, <laughs> very, very comfortable. Very comfortable. The, the bedrooms are good size, and. Uh, you know, they, they all have, everybody, everything has one bathroom. They have wash and dry in them, uh, a good dining room, and a good size kitchen. 
uh, and a nice size master bedroom. So they're, they're nice units. They're, they're not going to be, uh, they're not going to be crampy. I'm not saying that, Mike. I live in 660 square feet, my friend. So I understand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You'd be right at home. You'd be right at home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not for long, my friend. Not for long. But yeah. All right. Uh, did Mr. Dwyer have one last thing? Or were you raising your hand or were you not? You're good? I think with that, I'll take a motion. If, unless uh, anybody else has anything. Well, Mr. Mulholland, you good? Good. Thank Mr. you, Mr. Chairman. I'll, I'll take a motion. Well, I'd like to make a motion to continue the public hearing. Um, I'd like to do a little bit more research. As you, most of you know, in meetings past where certain items have been postponed to future meetings and for me to do some homework, I tried to, I guess, incorporate into the record and I was unallowed to because the public hearing was closed. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I'd like to make a motion to continue the public hearing so that I may do some more homework. And if I have to introduce it, I would like to do so at our next meeting. I, I don't know from a time perspective. I'm going to ask Mr. Mulholland to speak to well, that. Well, um, no, I I, 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 it's I'm not like, fair. I understand. Chairman, it's not fair for an applicant to open right. a meeting and right. continue it twice. So therefore, we have to close a meeting the night that we hear the presentation is not right. I right. would like to make a motion to continue the public hearing. Second. Mr. Harris, would uh, you want to say something on that? Mr. Mulholland, we have a motion on the floor. I just want to hear from Mr. Mulholland, and then we're going to take the motion. Mr. Mulholland, we already have a motion. We have a second. Mr. Mulholland. I, I think we would need the applicant's consent to have a continuance because we've run out of the 35-day clock. I just want to point that out to make sure we're technically legal. I'm not debating whether you should or shouldn't continue. I just wanted to point that out. Mr. Right, Mulholland, I, seriously. Come on. Point that out as staff. So and I can't do any saying. homework and I will not be able to present it once we close the public hearing. I learned that the hard way the last time. I believe Mr. Harris was involved in that as well. I believe it was the landmark case to where I tried to introduce new evidence. I, I wasn't involved in landmark. All right. Sorry, Ted. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. I apologize. So I <laughs> listen, if it's the Terry. science of the commission, the the, uh, the applicant will consent to the next meeting. That's I'm not trying to be difficult. No, not at all. Terry, can you just clarify for the commission and everyone's sake the reason for continuing? I think I know, but maybe just just a quick overview of why you want to see it continue. Why? Because now that this is presented, okay, okay, now it will allow me to go and investigate or research what was presented tonight okay. this case was originally excuse me this case <laughs> this applicant was originally supposed to be heard on the 21st of january right and i do believe that there were some public members in attendance that night who were unfortunately have not attended these past two meetings and on february 4th the applicant per um direction i'm sorry his the applicant's attorney poured towards how am I going to say this? Towards the direction of his client, asked for another continuance to go over some materials that were submitted that day, to my understanding. The, the request so was made because of request for plan changes from engineering, and we wanted to make sure that we were ready with all the comments from the engineering department, and, and the, the engineering department had time to review the plans and, and get the, the clean indication that we've received from from the engineering department correct mr harris so then tonight um exhibit q which is the engineering department review comments unfortunately i have not time to read them yet because they were just entered lately i believe i have not been able to read them i would like to be able to read these it is our duty as a commission to go over everything here and i'm sure that a lot of us tonight have just seen this for the first time I have seen half of it. I want to continue reading it. And if I find something that is not to my liking or I have questions on, I would like to have the opportunity to question you again. And if we Good close point. the public hearing, if I find something, I am not going to be able to enter that into this discussion. 
So, so therefore, so, why just, I made the motion. Just for one comment, the plans, other than some minor engineering changes, have been available from day one. I understand that, Mr. Harris, but I am not a paid employee, as of you are for your client, and therefore I research it when I have time to do so. Being a volunteer to serve on this commission while working a full-time job, that is what I do. And I do it quite well most of the time. This one, from hearing what is tonight, different designs on the building and such, the sidewalk and such, I'd look at to look at some other options from what I heard tonight and see what is available or see what it, the possibilities are. Hence the motion I made. All right, so we have a motion to continue the public hearing. We have a second. Mr. Peck, I think, seconded that. Okay. I'm gonna go around all those, and, I, I, and we have uh, Mr. Harris, his attorney Harris, uh, his consent as the applicant. Correct. Has an issue. And we're gonna go right around. Uh, Ann Thurlow. I say no, I, I don't see a need to continue it. Okay, thanks, Ann. Denise, Mark, Denise Markovitz. Um, I say yes. I think it's a good idea to continue it. Okay. And who else are we missing here? Uh, Mr. Dwyer? I say yes. You say yes, continue it? If a member isn't happy, we have to, we have to make everybody happy. That's yep. why we're elected to do this. Yeah. Very good. Well, there were more questions raised than maybe I anticipated, so I'm, I'm going to vote yes also to continue this at this point in time. I think it's the right thing to do. Make sure we have everything in front of us and, and, and uh, you know, we feel comfortable. Make sure we've had a chance to really look at everything. So I think Terry makes some good points and, and uh, appreciate your outspokenness tonight. I think uh, you put us on the right path with this one. So with that, uh, we'll move, move right along. And that vote was, uh, was it 4-2 or was it 5-1? 5-1, five one? Four five two? To one, Mr. Five Chairman. 5-1, five 5-1, one. One. thank you. All right, and moving right along to our regular meeting component, we're going to move right on to the application of Andrea Dallaire, owner, for a special permit under Section 25 and 25.5 for the keeping of livestock and poultry, more than six, at property located at 44 Cardinal Road on 16 plus acres, East Lime Assessors Map 52.0, Lot 20. Uh, any further discussion or are we comfortable with this? And if we're comfortable, I'll take a motion to approve if there aren't any last minute comments by commission members. Um, make a motion to approve. Motion to approve by Mr. Dwyer. Do we have a second? Terry Donovan, second. Terry Donovan has seconded it. Uh, any last minute discussion? I don't see any. All yeah. those, I'm sorry, go ahead, Mr. Dwyer. That number six was only for uh, a crowded area. I think we should change the zoning. If you have 16 acres, six chicks seems ridiculous. I think we should look at it in the future. If 10 acres, triple it. From six Mr. Dwyer, yeah, Mr. Dwyer, the six uh, poultry is for under one acre or less. Right. So it's six or less on one acre. Above that, more is allowed. Right. So it's more, it's actually more than six. Yes. I know. So I think it fits. Yeah, right. All right, so we have, a, we have a motion. We have a second. All those in favor, I'm going to go around. Ann Thurlow. Aye. Aye. Denise. Aye. Aye. And myself, aye. Norm Peck. Aye. Aye. So that vote carries 6-0-0. Congratulations, uh, Andrea Dallaire. Good luck with your livestock and uh, your chickens and your goats. And I think it's a great, great thing that you're doing. So congratulations. Moving right along, uh, item number two, uh, we're not there yet. We need to continue and complete the public hearing component of that meeting. Uh, moving on to number four, which is the approval of minutes of February 4th, 2021. Need a motion to approve those minutes of February 4th. So moved, Mr. Donovan here. Second. We have a second. I was actually absent for that meeting. 
Um, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Ms. Thurlow. Yep, yeah, we got Norm says aye, and Denise Markovitz, aye. Mr. Dwyer, aye. So that's going to be a 501. 501. Moving on to old business, there is none. Uh, new business, we have uh, the application of Kenneth Viega, agent for ONG Industries, the applicant, Ryder Truck Rental Incorporated, owner for a special permit for a change of use from an existing truck facility to a mason contractor supply yard and store at 10 Colton Road, East Lime Assessors Map, 09.0 lot 8. Uh, Mr. Mulholland, we need to schedule that. Schedule that. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Any business on the floor? If anybody the majority vote of this commission, does anybody have anything that they'd like to bring forth? Mr. Chairman, I, I, I have a question, just out of, you know, curiosity regarding to what we just discussed on the other um, application there. Right. If an applicant is required to post when they're having a public hearing and they have a date on it. Right. And that applicant opens the meeting and continues it. Should the date also be changed on there, on that sign, or is that like a statute regulation? Right. That's a procedural so because, thing that I'm gonna I'm gonna defer to Mr. Mahalan on that. Yeah. Anything what I, like what that? I find what I find is that a lot of attendance is in the yeah. first meetings when these uh, boards are posted. Right. And if the applicant's application gets continued. A lot of these people, in all right. honesty, a lot of these people will not check the website. They will right. not. A lot of them in the neighborhoods coming home from work or whatever see these notices. And so they will either, when we could meet in person, come to these meetings mm -hmm. or now in the Zoom age, you know, will attend on Zoom. And so they'll attend and then, you know, it will get continued and they will forget about it. And mm -hmm. then they'll drive by and see these placards stating the date. And they're like, oh, I missed it, you know, for somebody who is not in attendance the first meeting. So my question is, is there a way to where that we could require for them to either add an additional placard, like continued to so-and-so, et cetera? Because as of tonight, which you heard me vent um, some of my questions of, right. if an application is opened – and then continued for two meetings, that last meeting meets their time frame to Mr. Mulholland's point. So the question is, are we allowed to require something like that? In my right. opinion, I think we should require something like that. I Therefore, totally, I totally we are here, we are, Mulholland, we are here for the people, it. yeah. Speak the timeline, procedure, and, and tying those things together in a way that it addresses Terry's concern. Chairman, if I may, um, yep. that notice requirement is is one of our requirements, so we can modify that. And Terry has a very good point, and we could mm -hmm. require the applicant to modify that if there's a continuance. Okay. Um, I'd have to do a text amendment, but that's easy to put together. Okay. Um, a little bit, bit of housekeeping. So, um, we can do that if if, uh, if the commission decides to. Yeah. I, I've been on this commission 11 years. This is the first time this has come up quite like this, but I, I have to agree with with uh, with Terry's overall sentiment. Um, I, I just can't recall anything quite like this where, and I understand the feeling that you feel like you have all this information and the application that's sprung on you all on one night and there really isn't time to adequately digest it and, and take a look at it and scrutinize it. So, uh, you know, I think... Uh, Terry, good job, and, and I definitely appreciate you tonight for your, your efforts. So, so Mr. Yep. Chairman, can I yep. make a motion now to ask Mr. Mulholland to make a text amendment proposal for us to go over and discuss? Well, we can just add it. We can just ask him to uh, informally, formally, however we want to do it. I'm sure he'll do that for us. Mr. Mulholland, is that something you could do for us? We'll take a look at it uh, tomorrow. Uh, for the Sounds good. And with that, that segues right into you, Bill, for your zoning official report. We're we're busy, a lot going on. I've got a lot of, uh, surprisingly enough, in the pandemic, I've got a lot of inquiries uh, about development. I think it 
it's because uh, it's still inexpensive to borrow money. People are doing projects and, and East Lime has been discovered and we have um, uh, a lot of, uh, all due respect to everyone, there are still some tired properties along our arterial roads and people are looking to make investments. And so we're seeing some of that. Some of these projects will come forward to the commission. Some will fail before they get out of my office. Um, we're getting a lot of uh, what ifs. And so we continue to work our way through those. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Comments from our ex officio. Roseanne, can you hear us? She's got to unmute herself, so. Okay. There she is. Okay. Jay, it's wonderful to be unmuted. <laughs> <laughs> It's um, It's been a long meeting, a lot of information thrown out for the commission, a lot of things to consider. So I'll keep my report brief. Uh, the board of selectmen is basically tied up right now, literally, with budget reviews and trying to uh, compare what we think we can afford with what we need. In other words, needs versus wants. And um, looking very closely at what the state is going to contribute to the town. I think we have some new figures coming in that I haven't had a chance to review yet, uh, but hopefully, um, hopefully we're going to get some assistance, particularly with these unfunded mandates that are being passed by the state, uh, requiring us to do things and then not providing any money for it, uh, but yet we're obligated to do them. And of course, we're trying to look at trying to keep the tax tax rate as reasonable as possible with a lot of extra expenses for many of the uh, boards uh, because of the COVID expenses. So uh, that's basically what's going on there. Uh, I have a couple of other uh, subcommittee, another couple of ex officios that I can hold that information for until a later, a later meeting when there isn't, uh, when it's not so long. So thanks for all your efforts tonight and all your work. As I said before, a good meeting with some good discussion. Thank you, Roseanne. Very good. Comments from Zoning Board Liaison to Planning. It looks like Terry, uh, was there a meeting February 9th? Uh, yes, it was, Mr. Chairman, but unfortunately I totally spaced, but I did okay. get a copy of their minutes, so I do know what they had on their plate. Um, from their February 9th meeting, they discussed on their POCD committee to send the correspondence to the town boards and commissions to discuss the POCD. They also went over our zoning referral about our text amendment, and they had a municipal referral about the uh, town dump for the new uh, scale house scale and a septic system. And they also appointed a new full member to the commission. Mr. Fitzgerald, Larry Fitzgerald, is now a full member of the Planning Commission. And that was basically it from what I got off their minutes. Very good. Appreciate that. And Kim Kay is scheduled to go on March 9th. Uh, we'll get her a reminder uh, in the next week or so uh, leading up. I think we meet before that, don't we? Do we meet before March 9th? Sure. Yes. We do. Yes, we, we do. Should. I think it's a I think it's March fourth. fourth. March fourth. Yeah, March fourth. Excellent. Comments from Chairman. I really don't have anything tonight. Um, good meeting. Very substantive. Good discussion. Uh, I think on different nights, different people carry us. We're not all. We don't all have our A game every night. And uh, appreciate um, the forthrightness and and the. Uh, you know, the hard work of a couple people in particular tonight on this one and uh, great job. So let's, uh, you know, I, I, we're in the fe February doldrums right now and, and uh, moving forward. Uh, let's hope for better days weather wise. And, and certainly I know I'll feel better if we all get back to meeting in person again. I'm, I'm, I'm growing more and more frustrated with this format, even though Jen does a remarkable job and, and we make it as, as good as it possibly can be. But there's nothing like meeting in person and having applicants come before us to the podium in person, you know, and have members of the public speak in person. Um, so I'm, I'm, uh, 
I'm looking forward to that day. That day cannot possibly come soon enough. Uh, so that's that's my main sentiment tonight. Uh, as I look at you all in little one inch by two inch rectangles on my on my tablet. So uh, with that, I'll take a motion to adjourn and uh, stay safe, stay warm, everybody. Uh, February's been pretty rough, so hopefully March looks better. Have a great night. Thank you. Take a, take a oh, motion. Move. To take a oh, motion. Everybody. Motion by me to adjourn. Do we Turn. have a second? All Please. those in favor, raise your hands. Aye. 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 God bless everybody. Get some rest. Norm, yeah, thinking night, of you. Paul. Norm Peck, thinking of you. Thank you. God bless, my friend. In my prayers and my thoughts.